Just for selecting our answer for this talk. I'm a PhD student at University of Pennsylvania in Adam Wrestling's lab. And I'll just give the introduction. Um, and we want to talking about the uh, efforts that we and several other labs have uh, taken up in doing large scale sequencing to identify the multiple genomic alterations that are found in uh, this diverse set of uh, tumors that we call pediatric lowering biomas. And here we have categorized them in, into five different family of mutations on the basis of a known oncogenic partner. And as we heard repeatedly, BRAF seems to be the most commonly found alteration in uh, this set of tumors. And BRAF, which is a kinase involved in the MAP kinase pathway, has been frequently found to be altered in multiple adult cancers as well. And this has resulted in the prevalence of multiple RAF targeted therapeutics that have been uh, somewhat successful in adult cancers. However, from uh, my talk, I will uh, show you how these uh, therapeutics have found a different uh, response in multiple different mutations that are found in low grade tumors. So, uh, in contrast to the BRAF fusions, gene fusions involving CRAF or RAF1, which is also a sister protein kinase involved in the MAP kinase pathway, these mutations have recently been coming up with deep sequencing studies, but at a much lower frequency. So we were interested in characterizing and studying these CRAF fusions and the response to existing RAF inhibitors and other targeted inhibitors. So just backtracking a little, uh, RAF inhibitors such as Rafinib have shown great promise in targeting BRAF mutant adult cancers, such as the V600 point mutation in BRAF. However, in contrast to targeting these point mutants, when tested in targeting BRAF fusions in low rates, the first generation RAF inhibitor, the Rafinib, has actually shown paradoxical activation where transgenograph tumors uh, with BRAF fusion show an increase when treated with Rafinib. In contrast, we have also tested second generation RAF inhibitors, PLX8394, which has acted as a paradox breaker and has been shown to suppress this BRAF fusion mediated tumor growth. Therefore, RAF mutants tend to show very differential response to RAF inhibitors, where the BRAF V600 point mutation seems to be targeted by both the first and second generation inhibitor. The BRAF fusion, which I will show you through the course of my talk, responds to second generation inhibitor, inhibitors, but not the first generation inhibitor. And we think this is mediated because of the randomization profile. And therefore, this led us to question as to how the CRF fusions are functioning and whether these are targeted by the first or the second generation or any of the downstream pathway inhibitors. So in the lab, we have been studying the two CRF fusions QPI-RAF1 and uh, srgap 3 raf one where the end terminus of uh, uh, RAF1 tends to be truncated and it is fused to different protein partners such as QKI or srgap 3 However, the active kinase domain of CRAF is retained in these fusions. So in the absence of patient-derived cell lines, we tend to overexpress uh, these fusions in heterologous cell model systems and we uh, have done oncogenic assays where we have shown that both of these fusions can, uh, can cause soft agar growth in vitro and also cause flying xenograft uh, growth in vivo uh, in immunocompromised mice. And when we look into these cell lines, we have found that the CRF fusions tend to activate not only the MAP kinase pathway, but also parallel pathway called the PI3 kinase pathway, but by unknown mechanisms. So when we tested the first generation and the second generation uh, RAF inhibitors, as shown here in orange and green, we see that in soft agar assays, neither of these tend to suppress QKI-RAF and srgap 3 raf one driven tumor growth. Uh, and instead, we see some sort of paradoxical activation as well. Therefore, this suggests that while the BRAF fusions tend to be targeted by the second generation RAF inhibitor, the CRF fusions do not respond to the first or the second generation RAF inhibitors. So we were very interested in testing what, uh, what the molecular mechanism of such responsiveness could be. So one of the first things we tested was the dimerization profile of the CRAF fusion QKI-RAF1. And this is because dimerization is a very key step in the activation of the RAF kinases and the subsequent MAP kinase pathway. So we questioned whether uh, QKI-RAF1 can exist as a homodimer or as heterodimer with either of the fusion partners, uh, wild type proteins and how this affects the downstream MAP kinase pathway. So we did this using QKI-RAF co-IP assays, and I'll just go through this so we can understand the subsequent slides. 
Uh, so we overexpress uh, the flag type QKRF and make different versions of the MIG type proteins into negative cells. And upon lysis, we did a pull down on the MIG type protein. And so we could assess whether if the flag type protein comes along in Western blotting assays, that would suggest that these proteins are somehow interacting in the system. So first, uh, I'm going to show you data where we think that QKRF interacts with uh, itself. Uh, um, because when we pull down on mid type QKRF, the flag type QKRF comes along. Next, we tested whether QKRF can heterodimerize. And as shown here, when we pull on wild type BRAF or CRAF, uh, QKRF that's flag type tends to come along. And this is in contrast to the interaction pattern of the wild type proteins. Because when we look at the interaction of wild type BRAF and CRAF, they interact very well. And this has been shown before. But when we look at the interaction profile of the wild type CRAF proteins, they do not tend to interact. Uh, so this suggests that the CRAF fusion tends to provide some sort of distinctive advantage uh, to the dimerization of QKRF with the wild type CRAF. And lastly, we also tested the dimerization profile of QKRF with the N-terminal protein QKI or Beti because it has homodimerization domains. And indeed, we do see that uh, QKRF interacts with the wild type protein to suggest that the N-terminal fusion partner could somehow be contributing to the dimerization of this fusion. So coming back to the question of how this dimerization is affected in the presence of the second generation RAF inhibitor PLX8394. So first we ask how the dimerization of a BRAF fusion, homodimerization, and heterodimerization is affected. So in similar to IP assays, where we used uh, FAM 131 BRAF as the BRAF fusion prototype, uh, we did a disco IP assay in the absence of drug, and upon addition of the drug, we see the severe decrease in homodimerization as well as heterodimerization of uh, the fusion. We suggest that this could be one of the mechanisms by which uh, the second generation RAF inhibitor is disrupting the protein-protein interaction and thereby resulting in a, a decrease in the downstream pathway activation. Next, we were interested in uh, seeing how this uh, drug can affect the <coughs> homodimerization and heterodimerization of the QKI RAF1 RAF protein. <coughs> so in similar to IP assays, in the absence of drug where we see robust dimerization, in the presence of drug, we do not see any disruption of this uh, homo or heterodimerization. This suggests that, uh, that one of the reasons why uh, we do not see a response to the second generation RAF inhibitor in CRAF fusions is because it, CRAF fusions are able to retain a robust homo, homo and heterodimerization. Therefore, we decided to target for the downstream of the, uh, in the MAC kinase pathway by using a MEC inhibitor trametinib. And as you can see, in flying xenograft studies, we only see a partial suppression of CRA fusion-driven tumor growth, which suggests that the parallel pathway, PHU kinase uh, signaling pathway, might be relevant in this setting. Therefore, we decided to target uh, the MAP kinase pathway using Tromednet and the uh, PHU mTOR pathway using the mTOR inhibitor Everolimus. And we use these two drugs because they are both uh, clinically available and have been tested in a lot of cancers and are also in clinical trials for some uh, pediatric indications. So in plant xenograft studies, we can see that as compared to single agent therapy with RAD or trametinib, the combinatorial targeting uh, seemed to suppress the tumor for a prolonged period of time, thereby suggesting that this might be a viable option for uh, children with CF fusion. In conclusion, I would like to say that CRF fusions are distinct from BRAF fusion in their signaling modality. They do not respond to uh, clinically available first or second generation RAF inhibitors. Um, homo and heterodimerization are retained in the presence of uh, RAF inhibitors, which suggests a very strong role for the RAF, uh, for the RAF fusion partners, such as quaking, in inducing such dimerization. Therefore, uh, combinatorial targeting of both the MAP kinase and the PA3 kinase pathway might may be necessary for these children who have CRF fusion mediated tumors. And we have some preliminary data suggesting that novel dimer, dimer inhibitors such as the LIDD compound LY300-9120 could be a potential candidate therapy for these CRF fusions because of its ability to disrupt dimerization. And lastly, the big overall uh, message 
from uh, the study is that molecular classification of low grades is very essential because even within the same subtype of tumors, patients that have either a BRAF fusion versus a CRAF fusion might respond very differently to targeted therapy. So we really need to understand the molecular mechanism behind each of these uh, mutations. Lastly, I would like to thank everyone in the lab, especially Adam Resnick, who has been my PI for the past four years, uh, Plexicon for providing us the compound uh, collaborators, and lastly, big thanks to uh, all the funding agencies, which are philanthropic organizations, and we could not have done this work without their support. Thank you.